Hello and welcome back to this fourth installment of my VATSIM tutorials. In this episode I will go through the charts for our flight from Oslo Gardermoen to Copenhagen Kostrup Airport. I will be using the MDAC client from Navigraph, which in itself is a free application. The charts I'm using are not, but they are inexpensive. You can search the web for other sources of free maps for your flight if you prefer. Just make a notice of what type of charts I cover in this tutorial, and you should be okay. Why should you use maps at all, you might ask? Well, I remember back to my own beginnings on VATSIM a few years ago, and I didn't use charts all that much. However, I, and I think it's prudent to add, that I was basically being a nuisance on the frequency when all too often I wasn't able to carry out many of the ATC instructions, because I had no idea of my surroundings or standard procedures, due to not having the relevant charts. I had no idea where Yankee and Sierra taxiways were, and I was quite oblivious to the speed and altitude restrictions on my SIDs and STARS. I probably busted all the altitudes out there. All in all, I was a newbie, and a lazy one at that. I think I turned out okay in the end though, and you won't kill anyone either by not bringing the relevant charts for your trip. However, and this is a promise, you will save yourself a lot of frustrations by preparing them. If you end up taking your VATSIM career somewhat seriously, your charts will be a natural part of your flight planning. Remember me saying that a lack of knowledge and experience is not a problem on VATSIM? Because that can be learned? Well, you can't learn anything without study, and charts are an essential part of that. After a while as a newbie, you will probably feel somewhat embarrassed by being ill-prepared. Now a little word on my favorite chart application, NDAC, from Navigraph. Navigraph has the benefit of a frequent updates to keep your charts current. If a change to Navates has been implemented somewhere in the world, Navigraph is your safest bet for up-to-date charts. Navigraph is the number one provider of current ERAC cycles for flight simmers well round. ERAC stands for Aeronautical Information Regulation and Control, and is really a fancy way of saying current and coordinated aeronautical navate data collection, which I guess is rather fancy as well. You want to use a pretty new ARAC cycle to make sure you aren't trying to fly to a waypoint that has turned obsolete and isn't in operation anymore. Ok, on to our charts. Let's have a look at the relevant charts for our departure from Oslo Galdemorn. I will go through the ground layout for Galdemorn and the SIDS. Then I'll take us on to Kostrup and look at, a, at a, the star chart, the ILS approach, ground layout and parking chart. There are a lot of available charts for each, air, each airport, and of course even more serious sim pilots than myself will probably prepare those as well. However, this is the, the above mentioned charts will suffice for most of your simming on VATSIM. So, here we are on uh, Galdemoon, and we're parked at uh, gate 22, north side of the terminal. When we push back, we will, can expect a uh, uh, tax instruction to take us from Gulf and November to Hole Short, runway 01 left. What you should do is have this chart available to you and use the pen and paper to scribble down your taxi instructions and look it up if you are unsure where a specific taxiway is. This is our departure chart. We're doing the Oxat 1 Alpha departure and just confirming the, the waypoints of the chart. These few waypoints called uh, Golf Mike 521 and 522 might actually be called something else in your FMC. Don't worry too much about it. Uh, use the plan mode to see if the 
graphical representation of the departure looks similar. If it's very different, something is probably wrong. Uh, just be sure that you have the Arcsat departure and probably Nathan will be there as well. This will tell you that you have a speed restriction on your upwind for 220 knots. At uh, Golf Mike 522, the speed is uh, raised to 250 knots maximum and below flight level 100. This SID also has an altitude restriction. Uh, initial climb is 7000 feet. So you set your altitude select on your MCP to 7000 and try your best not to bust that altitude. Many times you will get a SID, a SID clearance and the ATC won't mention the initial climb. That doesn't mean you're free to fly whatever altitude or flight level you prefer. You are still obligated to uh, climb initially to 7,000 feet, whether he says it or not. And this is a quite important point to why you should be start uh, studying your charts. So next is our um, approach for uh, custom and uh, our star chart. Uh, we have the SLED 3 November arrival and it lists a few altitude restrictions. At Sveda you need to be minimum flight level 100 and the next waypoint says you need to be minimum flight level 70 and then minimum 5000 waypoint after that. It doesn't list any spe uh, specific speed restrictions on this star so we will gather uh, maximum uh, speed 250 knots be below a flight level 100. It also holds some other restrictions uh, for the holding uh, if that would be needed. Uh, holding uh, points are very rarely used on VATSIM unless for events with uh, massive loads of traffic. Again, it would be uh, wise of you to check. Uh, your FMC and see if you do have a uh, corresponding uh, FMC and legs page to this chart. Here is our ILS approach plate uh, and as you can see we have an uh, ILS frequency of 109.5 and uh, ILS course heading 219er. Threshold elevation is 8 feet, so it's close to the sea. And um, we have a graphic representation of the ILS approach itself and uh, the final approach point at around uh, 9 to 10 uh, DME from the ILS. It tells you here that uh, your latest intercept will be at 3,000 feet, heading 219er, and descending on a standard uh, 3 degrees for the runway. If you declare missed approach, it also tells you what to do. You need to climb on runway heading 219er to 500 feet or 1 DME after the ILS. Whichever, whichever is later. Then turn left to heading 188 and climb to 3000 feet and inform ATC that you're doing a missed approach. The last part here is uh, for calculating your minimums and I will not cover that in this tutorial. Here we have the uh, ground chart, the ground overview. We have our runway of 2 to left, um, planning on exiting on uh, Bravo 4. Could do Charlie as well, but uh, as you can see it has a pretty steep angle of the exit and uh, Bravo 4 will be more comfortable. At this point when we exit the runway uh, we will call up ATC and say runway vacated 
and we will anticipate getting our tax instructions to gate. At this point it's pretty important that you have your pen and paper ready to scribble down the tax instructions and gate you will be receiving. Then we will follow our tax instructions, probably from Bravo, crossing runway 30 onto the apron and the specific apron taxiways to our uh, gate. Lastly, we have our gate uh, overview, a parking overview, so we know w how to navigate to the specific gate that we will be receiving. This concludes this part of the tutorial. We have covered uh, uh, planning our charts, and uh, next episode I will be covering um, live ATC communications. We will start with uh, radio check, proceed on to uh, IFR clearance, and push and start, taxi clearance, takeoff clearance, and contacting the, uh, the departure. So until next time, have a safe flight.